Hi, today we'll be looking at Potainer, which is an open source tool for managing containerized application. And it works with Kubernetes, Docker, Docker Swarm, and Azure ACI. So why I like Potainer is because it removes the complexities of using the CLI and gives you a visual view into your container environment. And in my opinion, it's a great tool to assist you with learning Docker and Kubernetes. So if you're new to Docker and you're learning containerization, and if you're new to Kubernetes, I highly recommend setting up a lab environment with Portainer. So let's get started with installing Portainer, which is pretty easy. So if you go to portainer.io slash install, click on the community edition, and let's set up a new Portainer Docker standalone environment. And I'll be using Linux today. So if I go down, we'll see that we can create a volume for our Portainer data. So I'm gonna open my Linux server here. I already have Docker installed. So if I do docker dash dash version, you can see I have Docker 20.10 installed and, and I do have an Nginx container running. So now let's clear our screen and install Portainer. Create a volume for our Portainer data, paste that command. And we have our volume created. Now let's go back and copy this Docker run command. Paste that. So as you can see, it'll pull the Docker image and also run the container. So now if I do Docker PS, you can see that I have two containers running on my Linux machine. So if you go back to the browser, you can see that it says by default, Portainer generates and uses a self-signed SSL certificate to secure port 9443. Alternatively, you can also provide your own SSL certificate, but if you require an HTTP port 9000 open for legacy reasons, add the following to your Docker run command. So instead of this, as you can see, we will be using 9443. So Let's go ahead and go to not localhost because this is running on my Linux machine, which is different than the machine that I'm recording the video on. So let's go to my Linux machine port, which is... And as you can see, we get to the initial setup for Portainer. So now you can see that within their documentation, you'll have to create an admin user with a password and then you'll be able to look at the dashboards. So let's go ahead and create this. So I'm gonna use a really strong password. There we go. And now you can see this is the Portainer dashboard. Let me zoom out a little bit. We'll click on get started. And as you can see, we have a local machine. So this is my Linux machine where we have four containers zero stacks because I have not deployed anything with Docker Compose. So if I click on it, you'll see there are seven images, four containers, two volumes, and four networks. So if I click on four containers, you can see that there is an Nginx container that's currently running and the Portainer, Portainer container itself. So let me expand the side menu or the sidebar and you'll see that there are different settings that you can look at. Or different configurations so within my network you know you can add networks by just clicking on networks and coming back to containers this is a really cool dashboard because you have uh, the creation date you also have the ip address the port that is being exposed and you can also run commands on your container so you can execute commands by connecting to it which is awesome now similarly within our images you know you can add your own docker hub uh, repository and search directly within this dashboard, but also it will tell what images are currently on your machine. So you can see these are all the images that I have, but I can also pull images from Docker Hub. Networks, we already kind of talked about it. You can add more networks to your Docker containers. Similarly, you can do the same for volumes. You can look at events. So this is basically all the things that we have been doing in this machine. So you remember we created the Portainer data volume. So you can look that the Portainer container was created. So this acts as logs. 
And if you click on host, this will just give you the host information. In my case, it's a Kali Linux um, machine with 12.5 GB of memory and four CPUs. Um, so yeah, I use a old Linux laptop as my home lab. So this is where it's set up. And then you can also configure, you know, the user settings, uh, the environments. So we created a standalone environment. Remember when we were doing the initial setup, you can add more environments and the setup instructions are pretty similar. So if you click on install Portainer CE, see how it has add an environment to an existing installation. So that is how you would add more environments. But yeah, as you can see, it took us less than a minute or two minutes to install Portainer and configure it with my Linux machine. So the idea of this video was to give you a high level view of what Portainer is and how easy the installation is. And you can decide for yourself if you want to go ahead and download it. A few things that I really like about it is it gives you a nice GUI or graphical interface to use Docker. And if you're new to Docker, I highly recommend using Portainer because it helps you learn visually because sometimes, you know, using the CLI can be intimidating, especially if you're a beginner. And if you're already familiar with Docker, I think you can still use Portainer as an assistant on top of the command line. Anyways, I hope this video was helpful. Let me know in the comments below if you have Portainer running on your home lab. And of course, if you have any questions, leave them in the comments. Peace.